Kia ora koutou. welcome. I'm Original Arjack, and I'll be your pilot for today's episode of We Might Crash, the live stream where we might crash. Today that really might happen because I am flying a plane, running OBS, trying to run all kinds of media, so we really might crash today. I'm juggling a lot of balls here. We are streaming to you today live from beautiful Scorching Bay on the... <clears throat> on the east coast of the Miramar Peninsula in Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Today we'll be touring in the Icon A5, Amphibious and Landcraft. This is perfect for this part of the world and for today's tour. We got uh, peninsula surrounded by water, so the Icon is going to be ideal. Miramar is a fascinating place. There are so many beautiful points of interest here. It's an important landmark in the history of Aotearoa and the site of some of the first Māori settlers. Many people who live and work here today are an important part not only of the New Zealand film industry, but the film industry worldwide. And if you're a fan of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films, you are in the right place. Now this is a special episode for me. I live and work in the film industry here in Miramar. In fact, I'm streaming uh, from just over that hill there. Learn to zoom, Joe. So I'm streaming from just over there. My dad, back home in Calgary, Canada, just moved into his new place. And since he can't be here and I can't be there, uh, uh, we can't be there, my partner Heather and I, this little tour of our home is going to be our housewarming gift for Pops. Scorching Bay. Scorching Bay is a pretty little bay. There are a lot of pretty bays around Miramar. This is one where there's this cute little cafe called Scorcharama, kind of right next to the beach. Scorcharama has fantastic coffee, amazing baristas. Crystal, you are the best. I've never had a bad coffee here. It's a New Zealand brand. I think uh, it's Havana beans. Amazing food, amazing wait staff. The really cool thing about Scorch is you can sit on the um, patio and get these unbelievable views of Wellington, of the, you know, the bay out here. You can see across uh, the bay to Eastbourne here, there's a cool recreational area up there called Days Bay. Down here is Sea Tune and where the bay lets out into the Cook Strait. So all kinds of fantastic views from here. You can eat your food, drink your drinks, head over to the beach, have a nice little swim. Historically, Scorching Bay is interesting because apparently it was used by the early Maori settlers as a, a whale observation point. Now I think, I read that on Wikipedia, I think it's up in the air about at what point or if ever ancient Māori who settled this place around 950 CE were active whale hunters, or if they just, you know, observed them. It, it is definitely recorded in the historical record that beached whales or, or dead whales were used by Māori for meat and, uh, and teeth and bone, but uh, I, I don't think it's settled about whether they were active whale hunters. And, and certainly not early on when this place was first settled, perhaps uh, later on. So if anybody knows, let me know, because I'm super curious about that. Let's take off. I think we've covered everything about Scorching Bay that I wanted to talk about, so let's get ready to take off. So I am going to do a cursory little safety check of the icon here. We've, uh, we're going to pretend that we've already done a full safety check, so we're just going to make sure that we're safe to get back up in the air here. So the first thing we want to check is the fuel valve on. It is. That's going to allow the engine to draw fuel from the tanks. First thing we're going to turn on is the battery. And I like to turn the map on on the Garmin. We're not going to use it too much on this trip but it's always nice to have it for positional reference. So I'm going to do this quick light check. So what you want to do is hold this button down 
and make sure that all these lights down here that you expect to go on, go on and don't flicker. They all look solid, so that looks nice. Now, mouse control with the Magneto is not great, so I'm gonna do this with the controller. So the Icon A5 manual, there's, f I think, what, four or five different positions here. A, B, both, and start. And you're supposed to, you know, put it to A, count to six, and then you're supposed to see things like the oil pressure and the oil temperature, at various gauges increasing. It doesn't happen in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so at least this version, I don't think the simulator simulates those aspects. So let's just start. And what we should see here is that the, yeah, you can see the pressure is already in the green zone. Temperature is increasing, so that's going at a good clip. So that should be fine for takeoff. It is early spring here in New Zealand, and we often have southerlies this time of year. Got good prop movement and we're idling, good. So southerlies come in from uh, the Cook Strait. We're actually facing north here, so we're gonna turn around and face south because you always wanna take off and land into the wind. So we're just gonna position ourselves. Now you'll notice that this water is, there's, I think there's a bug in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It always, the rudder pulls to the left here. I don't know if that's accurate simulation or a bug, but okay, there, we're headed straight. This is fairly calm water. Now, Wellington Harbor is not often this calm. This is one of the windiest places I've ever been. I don't know if it's how it compares to the rest of the, rest of the world, but it's, super windy here. This is what the harbor normally looks like, so not super friendly to a small amphibious craft like this. The other day I went for a walk though and it was pretty calm. It's still spring, you know, uh, early spring, so it does get calm, but for the most part we're gonna have rough seas in this part of the world. I have I have live weather turned off because this is just gonna be a nice little a nice little trip. If I turn the weather on, I suspect it's fairly rough in the harbor right now. That's not, that's not so bad. So this is, you know, as I look outside, this is roughly what the weather looks like. Oh, it looks like we got some thunderstorms coming in. So that's not bad, but this is meant to be a nice, sunny, friendly little trip around the peninsula. So we're gonna turn off the weather. So. We are good to go here. Let's throttle up and we will roll at about 45 knots. Now there's a road that goes all the way around the peninsula. You can cycle it, you can walk it, you can drive it in your car. And this particular little stretch between Seatune uh, between Scorching Bay and Seatune has some great little uh, points of interest and pretty things you can see. There's these cool rocky outcroppings. Uh, super, super rough. I just love the way the rocks outcroppings look out here. And the water, especially in summer, turns this beautiful shade of teal. There's cool little quirky points of interest like the book exchange phone booth and just a really pretty ride all the way down here to Seatune. So this is our first stop here is the suburb of Seatune. I'm gonna go into active pause right about here. Seatune is a cool little suburb. There's all kinds of beautiful houses. Uh, there's a couple great places to eat. We've got all kinds of friends that live here. Lord of the Rings fact, uh, the, uh, a bunch of the cast and crew of Lord of the Rings back in the day stayed in rentals here, I believe. Uh, a lot of the principal cast stayed here. This is a great place to cycle through in the summer. You can uh, take several routes through Seatune to the cutting that leads to Moa Point that we'll see later on. One really cool feature of this suburb 
I'm going to point. Okay, that sun is right in our eyes, so let me just cheat the time a little bit. Move it forward. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Ah, uh, we still got lens flare there. Okay, we're gonna make it a little earlier in the day. That's more like it. So you see this this detail here. Microsoft Flight Simulator is right now doing the best it can with the only data it has, which is a, some elevation data, I believe, top-down satellite data. And, uh, you know, it's knowledge of what's going on in the world weather-wise. So it's making its best, get, the AI that handles generating all this geometry is making its best guess at the water level and, you know, what these houses look like. It's, it's guessing what the houses look like just from what the roofs look like and whatever, what little information it can get around those. So it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have enough information to render this dock here. And this dock is pretty cool. So let's take a look at what it looks like from the ground. This dock is a place where you can take the harbor ferries that run to several different locations around the harbor. Just come back here. So you can take the harbor, uh, take the ferry from this dock all the way across to Days Bay there, which is a cool little recreational spot. Uh, this island, which is called Machu or Soames Island, and then down here to the Wellington CBD. We haven't had a lot of luck getting on this ferry. We, uh, the few times that we've tried, it's either been too rough or it's been a ferry holiday. But what you can do, apparently, is take bicycles on the ferry. So we would love to get on our bikes, cycle over to the ferry, go over to Days Bay here, and you can actually, you can actually rent bikes over in Days Bay as well. But you can cycle all the way along this little bit of coast here, all the way to this point where there's these cute little lighthouses that look out over the bay. So we've really wanted to do that for a while. Just one of the many cool things about Seatune. Another interesting thing, let's zoom out a little bit here. Out, out. This area right here is the location of a super, super shallow reef with very violent rocks. You remember you saw those, these rock outcroppings here. Now imagine those are right underneath the surface of the water. There have been uh, a number of shipwrecks through history. A couple dozen are listed on Wikipedia, the most recent of which is the inter-island ferry uh, Wahine. So that was in 1968, which is like 54 years ago, so it's it hasn't happened in a long time, which is good news. There's a memorial to the Wahine right about in this area here. One really interesting part of Barrett Reef is another thing that's, uh, there's just not enough data here for the flight simulator to render it, is a rocky outcropping here called Steeple Rock. The Maori name for Steeple Rock is Te Arawaro o Kupe, which in English means the front of Kupe. And it's named after the legendary Polynesian discoverer of Aotearoa, Kupe. And it's, uh, it was around 950 CE. I don't know if there's an exact date understood, but I think, I think it's a range from, you know, one, between one, 900 and 1000 uh, CE. Kupe is reported to have injured himself on this rock. So there's cool heritage here in Situn about this rock. This rock honors Kupe's mana, the amazing act of discovering Aotearoa, land of the long white cloud. This is a nice little warning for ships. I guess throughout history, this little rock Rocky outcropping was a warning through ships that over here is where Barrett Reef is. Stay away. And, uh, you know, good little mariner warning. Warning. 
So we're going to continue on here. Over to the south part of Seatune. I'm going to throttle down a little bit more. We're going to be doing some fantastically illegal and dangerous flying. The elevation data here is not great. This is, uh, there's much higher elevation over here than what you're seeing in the simulator. And I'm trying to be all fancy with the camera work and, uh, you know, we might crash. So what I'm looking for is this area right here. There's a little clearing here. That clearing is the end of a hike that you can take around the back of Seatune, where you'll get some amazing views of here's Moa Point. Uh, this is actually Seatune looking north. And what you're looking for at the end of this hike is uh, the, re the remains in a kind of a uh, historic honorarium site of what is called a pa. A Mori pa is from my understanding, any kind of fortified location. So it could be a village with a wall around it, a military installation with a wall around it, typically in fairly hard to reach places and up high with a good view of the surrounding area. The PA that we're, that you visit here is called Oruati PA, Oruayati PA, sorry, Oruayati PA. There are three PA remains around this area, including Rangitatao Pa, which is one of the best preserved Maori forts in the Wellington region. This is, this Pa here is a, about a 30 minute walk, uh, or a 30 minute hike. And even on the windy day that I took this video on, it's m way more than worth it. It was a, gets a little scary because you get to some ledges and the wind is blowing you around fairly aggressively, but definitely worth it. We're gonna fly just a little bit farther along here. So you saw that photograph of Moa Point. Moa Point is remarkable for a few reasons. The first of which is it's the smallest suburb of Wellington. So we'll park right about here. You'll notice that there are a lot more trees in the simulator than there are in the photograph I just showed. And the, the trees, the scale of the trees is not quite correct either. But it's close enough and it's super pretty to look at. Smallest suburb in Wellington. Another remarkable thing is in the winter, or I guess any time of year that a southerly is coming up, this area is blasted by super cold wind coming from Antarctica. There's nothing but sea between this point and Antarctica here. You can see you can see absolutely nothing but sea out here. So this area gets hit. Now I'm a Canadian and I, you know, I've been in minus 40, 45 degree temperatures. It does not get that cold here. It only gets to, I don't know, minus four at the worst a couple of times of year since we've been here. But there's definitely something about the humidity level and the aggressiveness of the wind. When those southerlies are going and they go as hard as they do, it really, really feels cold. One really cool thing about having winds that aggressive is that Wellington is one of the least air polluted cities in the world. I mean, any kind of smoke you put up into the air gets blown away immediately. And what that does is give you clear views on days where the weather allows it, you have absolutely clear views You'll see way over here in the distance. Let's, and I got the sensitivity turned up on this mouse. This mountain range out here, these are the tops of mountains called the Kaikoura Range, which is on the South Island. That's on the other island of New Zealand. The top of this mountain, I believe the name of this mountain is, is, is Tapue o Uenuku. Tapue o Uenuku, which is 125 kilometers away from us at this point. 
a really cool thing about Moa Point is you come cycling, walking, driving along here, you can get out of the car and on a clear day see the Kaikoras, and it's really beautiful. Residents of Moa Point are treated to interactions with wildlife. There's the famous little blue penguins, which I would love to see these little guys. They are so chubby and cute, and look how blue they are. Apparently they can get quite loud on uh, clear, cool nights. It, uh, if new residents have a little bit of trouble sleeping until they get used to the sound of the penguins. You have seals around here. Uh, about the penguins, apparently there, I think there's a nesting area here, so it's, it's a protected site. You also get orca and southern right whales entering, entering the bay here. So it's really cool when that happens, you'll get, you know, there'll be tweets and Facebook posts about sightings and, you know, they're, they're in Lyle Bay and everybody runs down to Lyle Bay to try to get pictures. It's, it's really cool seeing all that, that sea life that comes in through here. Now to talk about the final remarkable thing about Moa Point, we're gonna have to fly a little further south here because we have to talk about the sunsets down here. And once we get to a stopping point, I'm gonna cheat the sun down a little bit. Now the simulator, simulator does a great job for a simulator of what a sunset looks like over here. That ought to be good. Uh, this is easier with my... Oh, no, you can't use the mouse with this. There we go. There's a nice sunset. So keep that in mind. That's, that's a pretty sunset. Our first summer here, we took a sculpture class at Weta Workshop with the amazing Kim Beaton, who gives these Hobbit door classes that you sculpt out of a material called Paltaya, which is a clay that air hardens and it becomes as hard and sturdy as concrete. People actually use Paltaya to make like bridges in their backyards and you can walk and stand on them. It's super strong stuff. So I made this Hobbit door. Now you, you, you might think to yourself, that doesn't look anything like a Hobbit dar door. Well, that's, you know, when you're not at all talented, as in my case, you just end up with a door. This thing is so ugly. I've painted it only in primary colors and I love it. It's, it's just stupid. It's the little sick Christmas tree from Peanuts. I just love this thing. So I took it out, threw a little flower in the vase there on the side, and took photographs of it at Moa Point one day after work. I had my fancy camera with me, and when I was all done, I packed up the lens, and I packed up the camera body, and put everything in my backpack, and zipped up the backpack. And then I turned around, and this is what I saw. And I was a little upset because you can't not photograph this if it's the first time you've ever seen it. So I had to get all my camera stuff out again, put the lens back on, take a bunch of photos. It's, it's undescribable standing in the middle of this. There's something about, I guess, the, the humidity, the thickness of the atmosphere. It's like you're standing on the surface of the sun. It's this brilliant white, orange, yellow just surrounding you absolutely astonishing. So you can see here, yeah, the simulator does a, does a decent job, but it's nothing like the real thing. So if you come to visit, oh, wrong direction. If you come to visit Miramar, I definitely recommend Moa Point. Why is that so bright? Definitely recommend hitting Moa Point. You can cycle here. There's all kinds of places you can turn off on your car, parking lots, get out, hike around. It's such a nice place. There's, um, actually, yeah. Look at a couple of the photo spots you can stop at. 
Heather and I just love stopping here in the summer. Continuing on, let's get a little farther up in the air because we are about to see the entire Miramar Peninsula here. Cool. More dangerous flying here. Miramar's Maori name is Te Moto Kairangi, which means esteemed island or precious island. Miramar used to be an island. This land bridge here, which connects it to the mainland, which makes it now a peninsula, was constructed and it hosts a couple of neighborhoods now, Kilburnie, Rongatai, and Wellington International Airport here. So back around 950 CE, when this place was discovered by Coupe and his people, Miramar was an island. We're flying over a community, I, I, I don't know if this is Strathmore, or is Strathmore just up here? I don't know if this is all Strathmore, or only what's up above here, or what's, a, what, what's ahead here. As I said, I work in the film industry here. I work for a visual effects studio, and for security reasons, we're not allowed to tell the locations of any of our buildings. Oh, look, there's a plane landing. Cool. This is, I have live traffic enabled in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so that's right over the hill from me, the airport. So if I didn't have headphones in, I'd probably be able to hear that landing. I'm not allowed to talk about the actual locations of any of the buildings that I work in, but for Dad, just for your reference, I work around here-ish. And unfortunately, that's all I can tell you. Around this general area. So somewhere in here. A few of the places that I can talk about, and especially places that'll be interesting to fantasy and Lord of the Rings fans, is over in this direction. where we have the coolest little movie theater. This is the Roxy Theater. My understanding is it was going to be torn down or turned into something else maybe in the 90s or the, the early 2000s. It was purchased by, I don't know who purchased it. I know Jamie Selkirk, who is an editor and, uh, and a major figure in the New Zealand film industry, runs this place now. Out in front of the Roxy is a cool sculpture of Gandalf, and this is a picture of Gandalf with the sculptor, Stephen Saunders, a friend of ours. Stephen made a small version of this sculpture that got him noticed by what a workshop back when he was working in the film industry in South Africa, and he came to Miramar to work on The Hobbit. Stephen's an incredible artist, incredible sculptor, works in the film industry. He's made collectibles. I absolutely adore his work. He's just fantastic. So you should go check him out at Stephen Saunders Sculpture on Instagram. Moving a little further north. I don't know where the... Normally there's a pin that says Miramar over here. It's not there. Also, for security reasons, I'm not going to pinpoint our exact house, but we live about in this area here. Now, these trees here, in, in reality, those trees are called Pahutakawa. In, you know, around Christmas, in the middle of summer here, the Pahutakawas, they have red needles all year round, but in summer they get this brilliant, brilliant red and they fall to the ground. So at Christmas, you got this canopy, run, when you walk through the neighborhood, this canopy overhead of brilliant red and green, and then on the ground, you've got all these beautiful red needles. I'm just gonna turn off the engine sound here for a second, because I wanna talk about the Tui birds that live here in New Zealand. Tuis are these gorgeous blue-gray birds with a little 
white tuft under their chin, and they have the most unique, cool bird song that I've ever heard. So let's take a look at the twoies here. This is one I recorded the other day. Such a busy little guy. That's the Tui song. Uh, it's so great to have a have a nap in the afternoon in the summer and hear the Tuis singing. They they generally bugger off during the winter months, but they're here for the summer. So between the Pahutakawas and Tuis, I am so looking forward to this summer. It's not even funny. Continuing on north up the middle of the peninsula, there's another film industry and Lord of the Rings related building, which is the Weta Cave, which is the storefront attached to the actual Weta workshop. So this big building just ahead of us here, the flight simulator is doing the best it can. This is pretty inaccurate for the way these, this is multiple buildings, not just one. This corner right here is where you'll find the Weta Cave. You'll see the, the three big trolls. I don't know what's happening in my frame right here, but it's this corner right here. The Weta Cave is a must stop if you're a fantasy fan, a film fan, a Lord of the Rings fan. They have events, they have collectibles you can buy, swords, shirts. There's tours of both the workshop and the miniatures set that they have. Any kind of collectible you can imagine from any kind of fantasy properly, property, you're, you're just in heaven here. And it doesn't just have to be Lord of the Rings. There's, uh, you know, they have, Weta makes collectibles for the Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, Stranger Things, The Witcher, Alien, almost anything you can imagine. There's also, um, they sell jewelry from a friend of ours named Cassandra Lopez. She makes really cool jewelry. You can check her stuff out at at Cast Creations NZ. Her partner, another friend of ours, Chris Menges, is a blacksmith at Weta Workshop. He makes swords and he's insanely knowledgeable about swords and weapons and armor and metal and just about everything, a super smart guy. If you're lucky enough when you do a workshop tour, you might see Chris or the legendary Peter Lyon making swords in there. So definitely go in and check it out. And this is the Bilbo mini epic. There's an entire line of these vinyl figures, these mini epics that you can get at the cave. And these mini epics, it's not just for Lord of the Rings. Like I said, there's, you can get labyrinth ones. The whole thing is so pretty and charming. And I just love those things. They were made by, I think it, uh, Mauro, is it Santilli? Santilli? Not quite sure I'm pronouncing it right, but Mauro is a sweet art as well. Continuing on, we go up the hill. I like to cycle up here. It's a pretty challenging cycle to get all the way up here. And you'll see an old decommissioned prison that was decommissioned in 2012. From what I read, it was decommissioned because it's just not conducive to modern uh, rehabilitation methods. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's quite known. It, it hasn't been decided what's going to be done with this area. The Taranaki Fanui would like to see this become a historical preserve kept as a green space because there's archaeologically significant and historically significant uh, Maori, site, uh, Maori sites around here. Quoting one of the members, this area has a history of original visitation by Kupe. We know that some of his descendants lived here. We know that various iwi over generations have lived here. There are signs of their presence their Urupa, their Pa sites, their Kainga, there have been lookouts, there's evidence all over. So they would love to see this place become a historical reserve, uh, preserve. That sounds like a fantastic idea. 
the prison is pretty creepy so whatever happens i'm i'm looking forward to uh the prison going away i don't think i think just because it's an old prison kind of weirds me up up ahead we're going to fly over the massey memorial which is a mausoleum that was built in honor of New Zealand Prime Minister William Massey. And right at the tip here, the simulator can't render it, it doesn't have the data, but that little white dot is a lighthouse called Point Hallswell Lighthouse. Point Hallswell is a great little spot. For us, it takes from our door to Point Hallswell is about a 15 minute bike ride. So it makes it perfect for a lunchtime bike ride to pop out to the lighthouse and back. Just a quick 30 minute uh, workout. The views from Point Hallswell are just astonishing. Whenever you come out here on your bike, you've got to stop and take some photos for Instagram because it's just so pretty. And so is Heather. This island is called Machu or Somes Island. Heather and I were lucky enough to visit Machu in 2019, right before the first COVID lockdown. The name comes from one of Coupe's daughters. There are two islands in the bay named after Coupe's daughters. This one is Machu, and then this one is called Makaro. Machu and Makaro. After Coupe, it, it's, it was cool when I was out in Situn the other day, I took a photograph, I realized that you could see the front of Coupe and Coupe's two daughters all in the same frame. Also called Somes Island, through history, this island has had various uses as a quarantine site, a military site. I think there were guns, um, uh, guns positioned here, weapons were stored here. But since, since 1995, this has been designated a Department of Conservation Historic and Scientific Reserve, and it's home to many native animal species. The local iwi, Te Aati Awa, has many animal preserve projects here. So it makes this place a stronghold for little blue penguins, skink, gecko, robins, the super cool New Zealand native lizard, the tuatara. There are some amazing documentaries on YouTube about the tuatara. I'll, when I post this on YouTube, I will put up some links. There's also giant weta here. So a weta is a, a giant grasshopper, basically. Not all of them are giant, though. There's little teeny tiny wettas. I've only ever seen teeny tiny wettas. I haven't seen one of these giant ones. My understanding is that the population of giant weta were moved to Machu from Mana Island, which is about 20 kilometers in that direction. I'm not sure why they were moved. I would guess to save them from predation or some other danger there. So this is a super important giant weta preserve now. You take the harbor ferry over there and you can hike up to the top of Machu. And once you're there, you're treated to more just gorgeous, unbelievable views of Wellington Harbor. Lord of the Rings, Point of fact, I believe this tree makes an appearance in either episode one or two of the Rings of Power series. I swear I saw that exact tree in one of those episodes. I'm going to have to go back and look now that I've found this picture. It's, it's an amazing place. The flight simulator here, like I've said before, it doesn't have quite the correct elevation data. It's quite a bit taller and bigger than that, and those trees definitely don't look like they're to scale. But it's still pretty cool. We're going to turn around and hit the last leg of the tour here. Off in the distance, 
we'll see Wellington Harbor. So that's Wellington over there. And we'll head back over to Miramar on the west coast. The west coast of Miramar here, we're going to pass a location called Shelley Bay, which was used in Peter Jackson's 2005 film King Kong. I don't know if there was practical photography shot in Shelley Bay or if there was just elements for uh, compositing that were shot in Shelley Bay. But it's on the opposite side of Scorching Bay and just every bit is pretty. There's all kinds of great rock formations. The trees here are super cool. I, I, the trees in New Zealand are so unlike what I'm used to in North America, Canada, and the United States. And just like on the other side, there's a really cool little restaurant cafe called Chocolate Fish, which has equally beautiful views of the harbor, amazing coffee, amazing food. This was a favorite cafe of many of the cast and crew of Lord of the Rings again. Another Lord of the Rings spot. This place is just silly with Lord of the Rings facts. You can, from the top of Shelley Bay, you get uh, these kinds of views of the harbor. Just beautiful. That brings us over to the docks here. So I don't know if you can see them. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Oh, we're going to fly over them in a second. So there's two docks here. Let's just give it a little pause. Episode six of National Geographic's Drain the Oceans, it's an episode called Deadly Pacific, has this segment that describes the occurrence and mechanics of the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake. New Zealand's only ice-strengthened deep water research vessel, the RV Tangaroa happened to be at sea during that earthquake. The Tangaroa is, has become essential in understanding a lot of the geographical, uh, a lot of the uh, geological activity in this region, and it is often docked here. I was really hoping it would be docked here because apparently I've taken no photographs of it, but it's, it's normally, well, not normally, a lot of the time you see it docked here. It's significant, uh, it plays a significant role because it happened to be just off the coast of the South Island during that 2016 earthquake, and the sediment samples that it gathered have uh, gone a long way to advancing knowledge of the geological activity around New Zealand. There's a 3,500 kilometer uh, hang on a second. Right. So there's uh, an area, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's the Hikurangi subduction zone. This 3,500 kilometer part of the Pacific plate that's pushing underneath the Australian plate and is that movement is responsible for a lot of the earthquakes that we get here in New Zealand. Scientists believe that that 2016 Kaikoura quake increased pressure at Hikurangi, the south part of Hikurangi. So understanding what exactly is happening there has become an international priority, and RV Tangaroa is at the center of that research. We had seen the Tangaroa docked here several times, and when we saw that episode of Drain the Oceans, we were just amazed. And we were also terrified that that episode is like no good news for New Zealand, the whole episode. So I don't know if you want to watch it, but uh, it's not exactly a comforting episode. Coming towards the end of our tour here, The elevation data here can only be described as abysmal. 
this is not flat. In actuality, you've got these hills and there's a cutting through it. And this cutting is the primary way traffic gets in and out of Miramar. And you'll see this Wellington sign, the Wellywood sign. This is the second iteration of the sign. The first one was built, um, I'm not exactly sure what the year was, but it was built around you know the time the Lord of the Rings was giving uh, international attention to this part of the international film industry. So this kind of Wellywood sign was built and the first one blew away in the amazingly strong New Zealand winds. So this second one that you're seeing here was built much more strongly. It has withstood the test of time and the test of wind. Now we are gonna finish our little tour here with a water landing or maybe a crash because I don't seem to be flying very well. We're gonna finish by, land, by water landing here in Lyle Bay. Lyle Bay is a pretty bay with all kinds of recreational area around it. Uh, Maranui Cafe is a beautiful little restaurant. I'm gonna put our flaps down and get ready to glide into the water. It's also a destination for surfers and windsurfers and paragliders and parasailers. I don't know if I'm using all those terms correctly. Last Lord of the Rings fact, apparently a lot of the cast of Lord of the Rings enjoyed surfing here. Now, my understanding is uh, for insurance reasons, they were encouraged not to surf, but you know, sometimes you got to take a break from all the shooting and just have fun. That's the end of our tour. Let's see if I can land without crashing. Oh, that was a pretty... Uh, no, no, that was a bouncy landing. Not the greatest landing. But we're all done. That was my little tour of the Miramar Peninsula, Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Just want to thank you for spending some time with me. Dad, I miss you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.